Congestive Cardiac Failure Congestive cardiac failure occurs when the heart cannot generate sufficient output to meet the metabolic demands of the tissues. Now this is one part of the definition. Or if it can do so, it can only do so at higher than normal filling pressures. And that will come at a cost which we'll discuss later. And in some cases, heart failure occurs due to greatly increased tissue demands, for example in hyperthyroidism due to increased metabolic rate or decreased oxygen carrying capacity as in anemia and this is known as high output failure. Now this definition is from Robbins and you can see that it clearly states that congestive cardiac failure means that the heart is failing because it is congested with blood. Okay, It is failing due to any reason because it cannot pump effectively. What can be those reasons? It can result from systolic dysfunction, diastolic dysfunction, valvular dysfunction and or uh, increased blood pressure or increased blood volume that occurs acutely. It is usually the common endpoint of many forms of heart disease as you can see here. The systolic dysfunction can occur due to ischemic heart disease, ischemic heart disease which will result in myocardial ischemia, angina and MI and thus we will we'll lose a part of the heart to ischemia and thus the rest of the heart has to work more hard to compensate for the part that we've lost. That's why we can have systolic dysfunction due to IHD. Hypertension can cause systolic dysfunction because it will increase the total peripheral resistance that is uh, the the pressure against which the heart has to pump will be increased. It can also result from diastolic dysfunction. Diastolic dysfunction can occur from left ventricular hypertrophy, myocardial fibrosis due to any reason, MI or other reasons, amyloid deposition and constrictive pericarditis that is the, the um, pericardium of the heart is going to undergo inflammation and then fibrosis and, th and then it will cause the heart to not dilate properly in diastole. Diastolic dysfunction is half of the cases of congestive cardiac failures and this occurs especially in older adults with diabetes and women. CHF can also occur uh, as a result of valvular dysfunction. This chiefly occurs due to endocarditis which either causes the valve to become stenosed causes it to prolapse or causes it to regurge the blood that it is pumping forward. Also increased blood pressure or increased blood volume that occurs acutely also puts more work uh, load on the heart and thus it can also result in congestive heart failure. We can say that there are two types of failures, forward failure and backward failure. They, are, they, they usually occur simultaneously that is, forward failure means that the heart cannot pump effectively forward and thus the tissues will have low perfusion. The end diastolic volume will be increased because, um, because there, will be more, there, there will be more volume left from the previous systole inside the ventricle. The end diastolic pressure will also be increased. While in backward pressure, there is going to be increased congestion of venous circulation because the b uh, blood will be backed up in the venous system because the heart is not pumping it into the arterial system. Now the cardiovascular system has some compensatory mechanisms by which it compensates for uh, a failing heart. Now what are those mechanisms? Firstly intrinsically we have Frank Starling mechanism. This simply means that when the heart ventricle has more blood coming inside it stretches the myofibrils inside the myocytes and and the more that they are stretched the more they snap back when they contract in systole and thus uh, what happens is that uh, more the cardiac output is increased or at least maintained so what happens is that uh, if if we have a part of the heart that is dead or we have a weak heart for some reason and we make use of this mechanism the heart does it automatically so and compensates for the cardiac output and the cardiac output is maintained and is normal even if the heart is um, is facing 
uh, ischemia or something that will be called compensated heart failure but with time what happens is that the muscle undergoes more changes there is more stress on the uh, on the cardiac wall and there is also cardiac hypertrophy then what happens is that with time this muscle will fail because the more muscle mass the more oxygen and nutrient demand and uh, that will cause the heart to undergo failure and this time it will be decompensated because we have used up this compensatory mechanism the second mechanism that the heart uses is activation of neurohumoral systems first of all what happens is that uh, the uh, neurotransmitter norepinephrine is released whenever uh, the heart starts failing or is not able to contract that forcibly uh, like it should so the beta 1 receptors in the heart will increase the heart rate and the contractility both of these will maintain the cardiac output for us secondly we can have renin angiotensin aldosterone system which will become activated it will increase the uh, it will increase the salt and water retention thus increasing overall blood volume and also it also uh, increases the total peripheral resistance and thus maintains blood pressure in this way by by increasing the total circulatory volume it makes sure that all the organs are perfused but this also has a detrimental effect because in the end we are increasing the uh, blood volume and all of this volume still has to be dealt with by the failing heart in contrast to this release of atrial natriuretic peptide by the atria will balance the renin angiotensin aldosterone activation because it causes diuresis that is it it excretes water and salt and also it causes smooth muscle relaxation in contrast to this and the last compensatory mechanism is myocardial structural changes now the myocardium what happens is that it undergoes some structural changes to overcome the pressure overload and the volume overload states that it is facing so usually it is going to increase the muscle mass of the heart so increased muscle mass will need more oxygen and more nutrient supply which we are not increasing but we are just increasing the muscle mass and um, this will also come at a cost and will will uh, there will come a time when the heart will no longer be able to feed this extra muscle now in this case we have two scenarios pressure overload states and volume overload states when we have more pressure against which we have to pump the heart has to pump what happens is that new sarcomeres will be added in parallel to the my myocyte axis long axis that simply means that if this is the myocyte new sarcomeres are going to be added like this it will increase the myocyte thickness and thus the ventricular wall thickness the ventricular size will be the same but the thickness will increase overall the mass will increase and secondly we are going to have volume overload states in this case if we have more volume to deal with what will happen is that uh, if more volume comes into the ventricle it will dilate it when it stretches more uh, sarcomeres will be added in series and if the, they are added in series it will increase the ventricle it will dilate it so the ventricular wall thickness may vary it may not increase as uh, as in this case but it will dilate so the um, the wall thickness will be the same or can be less but the heart is going to dilate so in this case we have to check the heart weight and not the thickness of the wall now congestive cardiac failure can be divided into left sided heart failure and right sided heart failure why does left sided heart failure occur is the same causes ischemia to the heart muscle hypertension dilated cardiomyopathy mi and restrictive cardiomyopathy as we have already discussed now when left side of the heart fails there are two main problems that we have firstly there is pooling in the pulmonary circulation because we have the left ventricle left atrium and then the pulmonary circulation so all of the blood will be pooling here in the um, arteries and capillary beds uh, of the uh, pulmonary circulation so if we have that what will happen is that the blood uh, blood and fluid will start leaking into the alveolar spaces and the lung parenchyma thus we will have dyspnea that is shortness of breath 
paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea that is these patients when they lie down to sleep uh, they cannot lie lie down completely like they cannot lie, uh, lie down flat and if they do what happens is that that increases the venous return and thus the load on, on the heart increases and the pulmonary congestion increases so that causes them to be become short of breath they also uh, undergo orthopnea that means same they cannot lie, lie flat and if they do they uh, they feel out of breath crackles are also these crackling sounds which are heard when the patient has um, fluid in their alveoli now due to this congestion um, in the pulmonary circulation what can happen is that the alveoli uh, there can be intra alveolar hemorrhage that is uh, blood will start to leak into the alveoli okay and uh, what will happen then and what will happen then that macrophages will of course come to clean up the area and they will when they uh, phagocytose the rbcs they will convert it into hemocytorin and which is the uh, which is a product of hemoglobin and uh, um, they, these have a characteristic appearance they are brownish and they are known as heart failure cells on gross appearance the lungs are heavy and boggy the uh, perivascular uh, spaces and the interstitial spaces are going to be filled with exudates the alveolar septa will be edematous and there will be accumulation of edema fluid in alveolar spaces on microscopy the treatment is of course ace inhibitors to uh, clear the circulation of the excess fluid another consequence of the right heart failing will be decreased forward perfusion so all of the tissues that the heart supplies will be compromised the decreased blood flow to the kidneys the uh, will have further de detrimental effects because the kidney when it receives decreased blood flow it thinks that uh, maybe the blood pressure is low that's why i'm not receiving blood so what it does it uh, it is going to activate the renin angiotensin aldosterone system to increase fluid retention and this fluid reten retention will further exacerbate the heart failure blood flow to the brain will also be decreased and it will cause cerebral symptoms coming to the right sided heart failure it is usually a consequence of left sided heart failure because if the right, uh, left side of the heart fails the blood pools in the pulmonary circulation increasing uh, increasing the pressures against which the right heart has to pump because usually right side of the heart does not work that hard um, as left side of the heart does so when it has to work more it will fail and also if we have a left to right shunt and more blood is being shunted from the left side of the heart to the right side it will probably fail and in chronic lung disease it can also increase the pulmonary uh, blood pressures and uh, resistance will be increased and thus the right side of the heart has to work more which it does not want to do and thus it will fail now when the right side of the heart fails we have uh, two problems visceral congestion and peripheral edema first of all we can have um, all of the veins will be congested of course but this jugular vein we can see it in the neck and it will be clearly distended secondly we'll have hepatosplenomegaly when liver has so much blood it will undergo passive congestion so the centri lobular area will undergo congestion okay and the peripheral areas will be paler and this has a specific characteristic appearance which is called nutmeg liver okay and if this right heart failure is also accompanied by left side heart failure what will happen is that we know that liver has two blood supplies so um, if both of them have failed there will be centri lobular necrosis in cases of chronic right sided heart failure we have uh, the central area undergoes fibrosis and this cirrhosis is known as cardiac cirrhosis because it is due to uh, cardiac issue now if the liver is congested the portal vein is definitely congested and the portal vein and its tributaries also include the splenic vein and that will cause the spleen to get congested as well so we'll have congestive splenomegaly as well and lastly right sided heart failure will cause peripheral edema and this will be subcutaneous edema in the dependent parts of the body that is the feet and lower legs and in bedridden patients it will be presacral edema and this is the hallmark of right sided heart failure that's all about congestive heart failure